Hey, man, hello, and welcome to Two Grumpy Vets and a Dude. I'm your host, Brian. With me, I've also got Rich and Dude, also known as Ron. We are been uh, longtime friends for a good four or five years, and we're just wanting to kind of start having sharing these conversations that we have. I think these conversations help men, help people in general just start living their life intentionally we're having this podcast intentionally and this this is going to be a podcast that is just set in a laid-back easy manner where we just get together we just we're we're talking we have our different awarenesses we we're going to be talking about all sorts of things at at first but one of the cool things about this particular podcast is that we are podcast 2.0 which is a value for value model there's going to be a lot of different features that are going to start cropping up as you hit. So if you are listening to this podcast through a podcast 2.0 compliant uh, uh, platform, you're going to end up hearing a lot. You're going to have a lot more interactivity than a lot of other, uh, of the other players. But if you are not on listening to it, or you're listening to maybe P- Apple podcasts or, or pocket cast or any of the other traditional podcasting players might go to oh what is that thing called <laughs> just my brain just died it's like yep you ran out of steam uh might go to uh go over to podcastindex.org uh and uh they have got a list of apps over there that you can actually hit and there'll be a link to it over in the in the show notes at, to the, so that you can actually see there's because there's fountain apps uh, or fountain a podcast there's also uh podcast you know, castomatic podcast guru uh Podverse. Podverse. uh these are all um great uh great podcast apps out there that will uh let you know when a podcast goes live we will eventually be going live uh, and and stuff so this is we're gonna have a lot of a lot of going on but this is being our First episode. This is the first time we're getting out there. We're grabbing everybody together strictly for the purpose of recording this podcast. Wanted to just kind of first off, kind of share our story, share what this whole uh, whole group is about. Because there's, there's three of us that are all, always talking, uh, uh, it, just about uh, once a week. We get together and we just kind of intentionally live our lives with each other in a way that we can just be able to commiserate. And so I want to kind of share each of our, our, each of our stories and, and talk about what it is that, uh, what are some of our passions, some of our, uh, some of our thoughts and, and things like that. And this show is, is going against any and every uh, podcast, uh, podcast, rule quote unquote rule there is because we're going to be talking maybe talking for 15 minutes one night may not have anything going on we're just kind of hey how was it going all right how are you y'all doing all right how about you dude dude all right cool we're awesome <laughs> and that's all there is to it so and then there might be a, we may end up talking until uh until you know maybe 10 o'clock at night this is uh we usually start we're going to be starting up these shows about seven o'clock every uh every thursday night central time and uh and we'll go until probably 10 uh that's kind of the the cutoff for me because i i i drive a truck and so i i end up needing to have to grab some sleep somewhere along the way and uh so but anyhow I, i've taken up the first uh the first five six minutes worth of of, of talking here i want to go ahead and pass this on over to to rich and let him uh let him introduce himself so rich who are you? I'm rich. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm rich. And yeah, like Brian said, Brian and I has been uh, sitting on each other four or five years. And I, I honestly, Brian's the one that freaking got me into podcasting. I've always loved it. I've started a couple and failed a couple, but you know, I'm still trying again. And Brian had this idea and I thought he was better than anything but i was like all right we'll try it because you know i don't like to conform to anything or anybody and uh that's why i love these guys that i talk to because we all don't we we don't conform i'm uh brian did not inform you but 
he was a Navy guy. Okay. He was a squid. And, uh, yeah, see, hey, I forgot that didn't say anything, right, Brian? Didn't say now, I'm, I haven't got to, <laughs> I haven't gotten to my story yet. So, well, no, that's true. That's true. But still, but, uh, I was army and, uh, and, and all like that. And, you know, one of the main things, and I've talked to a lot of different vets and a lot of them miss that camaraderie we had when uh, we were in the service and it doesn't matter what branch you were in. So, I mean, that's why, that's why we all got together, but. Uh, another one of my hobbies is uh, uh, ham radio. I love I love taking a radio and an uh, antenna and a wire antenna and talking around the world. I love it. It's as I'm telling you, it's a blast. And if you want to know, if you want to know more about it, hey, shoot me an email. I don't care. Uh, what is our email? Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, I th- well, you've got your, you've got your email. Yeah, mine. I- yeah, mine. Yeah, shoot me an email at rchelson at gmail dot com. So, that is uh, chelson at c h e l s o n. Yeah, With just an as R in front of it. Yeah, I didn't spell it. Brian, Brian hooked me up. <laughs> but uh, and 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 I also love my Jeep. I love the hell out of my Jeep. And you might hear Ron and I go go on and on about Jeep sometimes because Ron drives a Jeep too. But uh. Anyway, other than that, that's me, and uh, uh, I'll be with you, just like Brian will, and and introducing the next person. You want to go with uh, with Ron? Hey, go ahead, pass, pass it on over to uh, over to the dude. We're gonna pass you on to dude. Take it away. Also, oh. is Ron. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, yes, uh, referred to as dude. Again, um, our conversation started as um, a vets getting together just to talk. Also, um, vets getting together to, if they are having um, issues. I myself, a uh, combat vet, been to Afghanistan, um, Iraq, and I suffer with severe PTSD. Some days are good. Some days are not so good. So these gentlemen um, are kind of my lifeline to, if I need somebody to talk to with their military background, they know exactly what I'm saying and why I'm saying what I am saying. So again, we, you know, became friends through a couple of uh events and organizations and just you know we talk on a weekly thing about military stuff and you know again if i'm having a bad day they will they're there to listen um rich had mentioned to you that uh we're all prior military um i myself was in the 82nd airborne for 12 years 116 jumps and one broken neck later. And here I am. So I retired. Um, and also it just so happens to be that the three of us have been truck drivers within our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Two of us are currently driving trucks as a living. And one is a retired truck driver being rich. Um, Rich also commented about, um, Jeep life. Yeah, I've had, I own, used to have two Jeeps. Now I'm down to one Jeep, but yeah, going out and I bought the Jeep for its purposes to go out and wheel it out on the trails. Yes. It also is my daily driver. However, I like to see how far I can put the Jeep to its, um, capabilities, and had both of them almost on their sides being out wheeling. So I thoroughly enjoy going out and playing with the Jeep out in the rocks and mud. And then also I, uh, my other passion for most of my life has been roller skating, which I started roller skating when I was five years old i am currently 55 and i still own a pair of quad speed skates 
I've had roller blade speed skates in my lifetime. Uh, been to nationals for speed skating in my lifetime, but yes, I still own a pair of roller skates as does my daughter, as does the grandkids. And once in a while, we are able to get three generations onto the roller skating rink floor, which is absolutely a ball. That's cool. So that is (laughs) kind of Ron in a nutshell. Um, oh, and speaking of nutshells, because of PTSD, was on Prozac. And reason being is sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. <laughs> Dude, that was awesome, man. <laughs> that was awesome. I love that. <laughs> now, that's uh, okay. Uh, and uh, that might be something we have to start doing is coming up with just though we are are going this like i said this show is is a value for value model it's Uh going to be where we have you know we're 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 going to be taking time talent and treasure from our guys but at the same time put start putting up just you know this episode of the show is brought to you by the makers of Prozac, you know, using that, or this episode, <laughs> portion of the episode is brought to you by Tampax. We're not the best thing in the world, but we're right up in there. Type of stuff, you know, so, <laughs> and start using those type, just some, some, just, just hoax commercials that are just, just right. That might be something we throw, uh, throw in there, uh, while we go. May, I was, we'll have to come up with about a good 10 or 20 of them just to, okay, just to really, just to really, uh, to, to have fun with, with that because using the same two jokes because those are the only actual two that I know. So we'll have to go find a whole bunch more because <laughs> it should be yeah, too hard. It should be too I've hard. But- loved, and I've always loved Prozac because sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you sometimes don't. You don't. And so, yeah. And so, guys, and that, uh, to the audience, to the you guys, uh, guys and gals who are actually listening to it, that is part of the value for value. Yeah, we would like for you to send us money. We're, we'll end up having on the site. We'll and uh, site right now is uh, two grumpy vets. And the whole reason why we ended up throwing in dude is because Ron uh, Ron came along and goes, "Hey, I can join. I, I wouldn't mind joining in." It's like, "Oh, sweet. Okay, didn't I, didn't think you would want to join in on a podcast." And so I'd already bought the, uh, the, the, the domain of two grumpy vets. And, uh, so we've got two grumpy vets. I haven't actually gone off to see, uh, at the time of this recording, by the time it comes out, I should have it looked up and at least bought. So that's why I have no problem saying this right now, uh, because right. Uh, it should be open. <laughs> I would think, cause our name's kind of unique. But. Yeah. So, but the two grumpy vets.com, uh, uh, pretty soon we'll have three grumpy vets.com also. <laughs> And, um, so with that, we can, you know, we can, we, we have a, uh, we're going to, this is a, this whole show, like I said, it's a value for value. Yeah. We're going to be, we're setting up to where you've got means of being able to send us fiat, uh, fiat, uh, currency, uh, coupon, uh, or value for value coupons, which is just fiat currency. That's the dollar bill, mm-hmm. um, through PayPal, and and uh and the such but we also are using the podcast 2.0 uh, standards which means that you can actually send us satoshis and i know a lot of people who are especially our age if they hear uh bitcoin and stuff they're gonna go oh my god oh no yeah, no, that's a scam. yeah they're scared and i and i get that because there there has been a big push by media and by society as a whole saying that Bitcoin is this mean, bad, evil thing. And it was for a while when people weren't really paying that much attention to it. It is, it is very scary. It is very, you know, un, out of the ordinary. Yeah. And is. so a lot of people use it and they, but, and it, and it's a, it can be used nefariously, but so can, actual dollar bills well true but but say say the thing is also brian is is and this is what i've seen bitcoin they still haven't fully simplified it for for us regular folk it's still it's still a little technical 
for for most people i uh, think well it is i mean uh, well the satoshi part the podcast 2.0 part yeah it is it's still just it, it's nerd bill yeah it 100%. is 100 percent. it is trying to get you a, a satoshi wallet is just been a a exercise in futility almost, <laughs> right. and, and it's that, not. And come to find out, it's it not nicely. the technology; it's the fucking government again. Yeah, sticking exactly. their fingers, going, "Oh well, we don't know. You're, this isn't all regulated." Well, no crap, it's not regulated. There's a reason why it's doing so good. There's a reason why it jumps up to seventy thousand dollars mm-hmm. one day and plummets down to twenty three thousand the next, and that is because people are are using it for what they want. Now, does, is it, is it kind of, do you want to be investing your life savings into it? No, no, no but it's, all. but at the same time, people are investing their life savings in, you know, the value of the yen. they're buying, you know, stocks and bonds that is putting your money into American dollars, right. st- uh, money market accounts. It's the same thing, except because it's so heavily regulated, one, our, that's one reason why our dollar is not worth a freaking dollar anymore. The dollar used to be worth one dollar of gold. Used to be. That was and long so you could ago. actually go to a bank and say, hey, I need my $500 worth of gold, and they would give you $500 worth of gold. Now, nowadays, it might be just a, a little piece of, of gold about the size of a dime. Well, you know, I don't know. I just saw gold go over 2000 an ounce. It last, last uh, this was just the other day. It hit twenty three. No 29. shit, yeah. it did. I haven't yes. been paying attention to what gold, uh, yeah. what gold stuff. Oh, it just popped well, up. Yeah, yeah. Well, considering up, how like, much they're they're using, they're they're just uh, the government's playing uh, playing. You know, sticking their fingers in absolutely every damn thing. It doesn't surprise me. So anyhow, right. now guys, I'm going on all this tirade stuff, and you ha- still have no freaking clue who I am. So let me jump in here. I was, I, and, well, I, well, I was fixing break, to say we'll something like, like, whoa, <laughs> come on down. Now. No one knows who you are, dude. Uh, we do, who am but... I? I am, <laughs> I'm Brian Goodwin. I am actually a certified men's coach. I am, I helped form together what we, what we affectionately call the veterans call. And every Wednesday, so if you're a, a, a veteran, and I'll make this call out again later, if you're a veteran and you'd like to be a part of a group of guys who just sit around and talk about bull for two hours. And no, we don't record it, just to let and you no, know. No, 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 it's not recorded or anything. We just have a Zoom meeting, and you can show up. None of us actually even turn our turn our, our, our cameras on, so you can sit, you can, you can sit around and and – be doing whatever it is you want to do and you know we're just there to talk have a good time share and uh, again just intentionally live our lives with each other mm-hmm. for four for two hours it is just me rich ron sometimes there's about three four other guys who will jump in and they're not always there sometimes they are sometimes they aren't sometimes they come in because there's a they've got an emergency and they're just they're needing to get something off their shoulders and we all jump in. We've all become coalesce and become a, a very large support group for these guys. Yep. And so it's, I, I've helped kind of put that together and we've been meeting since, since about 2020. See, when was the first, uh, when was off the yeah. hard ball? That was what? 2020. 2020, no, that was 19, I think. 21. That was 2021. No, it wasn't. Because, yeah, yeah, because it no, was no, that. This is 2021 because t- uh, the February 2022 was the fr- was the ruck march. Was because it? it was two 22 22. Oh yeah 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 okay okay. So okay, yeah, it was right. it was uh, Hold in it. July, Ju- uh, no August uh, uh, of of 21. So yeah, it was just right that was after at birds, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was over at birds at twenty one. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, and it was about that time that I really we really started getting uh, kind of all the veterans uh, together with that. Right. So, but but anyhow, so I, we've been we've been kind of meeting shortly thereafter that. Uh, oh, for well, since twenty twenty one, which has uh, been. What is it? What, I, I, I went to Sunray High School, so that's what three years, three yeah, three years. <laughs> so, well, we'll I don't trust Brent. my. I, I I am too good looking for math, so we've got <laughs> yeah. we got to. Oh my 
God, so I've got to deep in here. Well, it is. It's it's true. I mean, you saw me struggle with trying to go 2004 minus 2021. Okay. I saw this struggle, dude. So, so you forgot to carry the, you're right. You forgot to carry the eight. Yeah, I got to carry the eight. So, (laughs) and so, um, but anyhow, I, I am, when it comes to, uh, to to all that i've just i've that was my means of being able to help support uh support the vets in in at least some way where because i am a firm believer that when when veterans are struggling it is they're struggling because they are have forced themselves to be alone there they are by themselves there is they have they have isolated they are are sinking within their own thoughts and that's when other men uh, specifically with with men with the male veterans when you have other men get together we have that ability to provide the community to lift them up Mm -hmm. and i that's how i i have always seen help come in you can you could try to tell somebody hey you're going to get better except no, there's no proof that you're going to get better. The only way that person's going to get better is if he decides and changes the way he thinks about what the problem is. Now, right. can you keep a person changed? No, no. Well, you can if they want to change, if they want to keep the change and they are willing to to apply the thoughts. But a lot of, that's a that's easier said than done because we have a habit where we fall into a the old habit of I'm no good or whatever type of, mm-hmm. of, of self-defeating thoughts that we end up having where we, we start letting the weight of the world pile on, pile on, pile on, pile on till where, yeah, we we get, we got to, uh, to, to distribute that weight one way or another. And that's one of the great things about men. And you're going to hear me talk about masculinity a lot because I help men. I think a lot of men in general, are suffering because they have been told men bad man white man bad any man is 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 bad white man even worse that whole line of thinking except for the fact that you can't separate men and we and they've done such a good job of separating men that now there's there men are are struggling with life they don't know what to do with themselves they struggle day in and day out with trying to just make, uh, trying to make, make it through the day, doing what they think they're supposed to, but yet at the same time, negating what their, what their responsibilities are, not knowing what the responsibilities are, because we have so many single moms, not, not throwing any shade upon single moms themselves, but it's kind of like how the feminists say men don't know what, what it's like to be a woman. Well, women don't know what it's like to be a man. Exactly. And so we, so not even they run around saying, Hey, we, I know how to raise my son to be a good man. No, you know how to raise your son to be a nice guy and a nice guy and a jerk are two sides of the same asshole. They're just, I like that. And they're just going, neither one are, are good. You've got a nice guy who is just trying his damnedest to, trick you into ha- and into ha- you getting naked but at the same time he knows that if he gets you naked he's got to he's got to to rise to the occasion of being the you know of being a a good lover and he doesn't even uh, he doesn't even know have the confidence in that right and so nice guys they they are afraid of two types of emotions everybody else's and their own. They want to, they want their emotions to be just a one line type of deal. And guys, honestly, I'm th- these shows aren't all going to be me uh, pontificating about about what the the uh, the struggles of men. That it's not what that is. This is again. This is kind of my intro. And if anybody knows me, I was inoculated with a phonograph needle. I can't <laughs> help but talk, and I will talk, and I will talk. I believe uh, yes, uh, your will. your brother. 
your, your brother-in-law commented on god damn he can talk can he <laughs> well well it was, brian it, it, it was uh i think uh after our first event or whatnot he turned and looked to me and he said i found someone who could talk more than you he's like i Hell didn't yeah. think that was fucking possible dude i'm like I, I, yeah he can talk i i i I have always, I've always done that. I mean, I've, uh, I could never, uh, whenever I was a kid, I don't know if, uh, if, uh, where y'all grew up, we used to have UIL competitions What's and that? these were like, like, uh, spelling bees in first, second, third grade oh, okay. and stuff. You had things like, uh, spelling bee. You had a speech contest. You had storytelling contest. You had reading, uh, or oratory contest you had all these different types of contests for kids from the first until uh, about like the eighth grade there's a big old long uh, every year you could get something they had speeches and they had debate club and and all this and one of them was a storytelling contest and what the what the objective was and i i struggled at this because it was you would hear a story can you tell the story back and within the same within the amount of time and still be able to fluff it up enough to where you made it really entertaining the more entertaining you could make it the better the problem is yeah i could make it more entertaining but i also made it four times longer than it's supposed to be <laughs> and right. so i i i would go in and i'd try out and they would they would have you you know they would have classes or, or meetings and stuff and you would try and you would tr they would they would try and they would work with it and work with it and that was the whole thing that teacher was always you're too long <laughs> like well i'm just telling the story i'm making it better heck you know and I, I i had fun with it it was good but at the same time yeah you're supposed to keep it under you know like five minutes or something like that and i'd come out at 15 you know <laughs> <laughs> it was just that, that's just the way it is and so yeah, I, I'm a yabber. I've always been a yabber. I don't know why I'm a yabber, but uh, I do talk. But and that's one reason why I went into uh, into coaching is because heck, man, I can talk. And it's it's not just. But that's the also the the drawback is because when it comes to coaching, it's not about me talking. Right. It's can I sit and hear what the other person's saying? Right. Right. And and help and let them just do the thought process. And whenever I was going through my certification, yeah, that was the biggest, that, that was my big deal is I was wanting to, to, uh, almost motivate, motivate or speak to them. And, and, and the teacher was like, going, no, 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 hold up, hold up. You gotta let the person coach themselves essentially is what she finally got around to saying it. And it clicks. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm here to coach them through the, the thought process that they're having. Right, right, and so that's that's the that's the big the big uh, 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 the the big censure, so to speak. So, but yeah, we, uh, anyhow. Now, so I, I let, hang on, I, hang on, hang on a second. Okay, okay. A second. Let me ask you, what's what's that last big word you said? Censure or 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 sensuous or yeah, well, no, it wasn't sensuous. I was gonna say I don't recall ever saying sensuous. <laughs> Uh, no, sometimes hey, words fly out of my mouth, and and I. I uh, well, that's, that's I I think I think that was one of them because you said it, and I'm like, censure is when you shut someone up, basically. Yeah, uh, you have to censor 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 yourself. Yeah, um, pontificate. Well, yeah, no, no, I know, it, I know what that one is, but yeah, but, I, most of us do do, so, but. Well, no, no, the thing, hang on, no, hang on, no, no. I'm not saying everyone who uh, who watches this will will uh, not be intelligent or whatnot, but they might not know what the word pontificate means because so that's an old. Okay, word. so we need need to write down. Word. Need a, uh, here's I'm, let me grab the book here, and I guess well, we can start making making notes. I got <laughs> we got our first jingle that we're going to have to come up with. <laughs> Ryan's word of the day is pontification. Pontification. Because you see, it was funny. The first time I heard <laughs> that, I was I was listening to uh 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 Phil Robertson 
they they were doing their uh, podcast. I can't now I kind of think of it what it is, but he uh he says that word a lot. He's like, I sit there and I pontificate. And yeah, I didn't know what it was at first. Speech so and, I, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And and I just I was like, I had to I had to look it up. So Ron, do you know what pontificate means? Not a clue. Absolutely In, zero. Pontificate. Well, I was going to say here. Here's a here's a here. We'll use it in another sentence to see if it helps you, uh, helps you understand what it is. The preacher was pontificating on the virtues of giving. Crickets. Message. It's speaking uh, speaking on the topic of. Oh, okay. Is essentially what it is. It's just it's a grandiose, a grandiose way of talking about a topic. Okay, it's, gotcha. it's 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 an old word though. It's from what the nineteenth uh, century. Yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> Okay. My my English teacher from high school would have been would be so glad proud of me because it took until after I got out of high school to finally fall in love with words. So, <laughs> because no. we would have yeah because yeah. I mean we would have well we had a, my my high school English teacher's name was Ward Haynes. Okay, and so we had Ward words is what the kids all in high school would call them. All the students there would call them. We knew we were having a word word test. Uh huh. And so our word word words were just were the vocabulary words. And so, and one day I was so proud of myself. I got him. I got him stumped on a word that I used. Okay. And it's not, it's one that people use today, but they use it more for in the, in the, in the, the, the marijuana culture, the cannabis culture, but it, because I was writing, I wrote out a story and I was having to tell, tell the story on, uh, in front of the class and I use, and I had to use an alliteration mm -hmm. and the alliteration that I used on this was a deep, dark, dank cave or no, no dungeon, deep, dark, dank dungeon, uh, deep, dark, dank dungeon and the word word that threw him was the word dank really yeah he's like what no what did you just say and i said a deep dark day well i know what deep dark but what in the heck is a, is dank where'd you make that word up at and i was like i didn't <laughs> it means wet it's, it's a it's a highly moistured yeah. you know it's a wet environment He's like, nah. I was like, yes, sir. And so I rolled it up and I showed it to him. It's like, and he's, he's like, well, I'll be. It's like, yeah. So you know, you want to write that word out ten times? And he looked at me and said, don't push it. Because <laughs> if you got a word, if you, if he asked you what a word meant and you couldn't couldn't uh, get it, he would have you write the write the word out ten times with the definition. Oh my gosh. So I mean, that's that's why I now know what jocularity means okay because jocularity is an inappropriate humor or, or appropriate uh, humor at an inappropriate time so jocularity is cutting a uh, cutting a, a laughing at a fart at a funeral right right okay that's having a little jocularity there yeah well, i was gonna say i was gonna say military life is jocularity yeah, yeah, you're always laughing at the most inappropriate time. So, um, <laughs> right. Uh, redundant was another uh, word word that I ended up having to write uh, a few times. So, yeah, we I was very redundant in my writing of redundancy. So, so, <laughs> so, so, uh, so uh, since you've given this uh, uh, English lesson, and thank you for that, by the way, you know, uh, what about your uh, <laughs> later career after you got out of high school? Well, out of high school, I was going to be the world's greatest photographer for okay. two years, and then realized that uh, that life in the nineties is just as hard as life in the twenty twenties. Whether the kids these days want to believe it or not, 
it, right. it, it's it's still i was i was living off of a very well paid eleven dollars an hour oh that but was big money you, dude Oh well, yeah, yeah, back then it, it was. Except for the fact that if when you looked at it, I was still living below the poverty level, right? Because I think poverty level is like twenty eight thousand, and was it I wasn't high like, in the nineties. I think so. Yeah, yeah. it might be a, it might be twenty five, but anyhow, but eleven eleven dollars an hour, forty uh, forty hours a week because I was not going to work overtime. I mean, pff, oh, I God. have a life, except for the fact that my life was trying to figure out how I was going to make it ends meet. So, <laughs> <laughs> and so I, well, I'm I not, was a, but I ain't I doing a, no I, damn overtime. Yeah. But I ain't well, doing no I, overtime. I was at, uh, there wasn't much. The only time you actually got to make any real overtime was during, cause I worked at family photo, uh, actually family photo, new generations in, uh, in Amarillo. And that new generations was a, it was just is a for, portrait studio, and so you'd have oh, families okay. and seniors and stuff come in, and you would sit there and you take pictures and pictures of little Johnny, and you try to get them to smile, but you ha- there's a fine line you had to try to get them to smile, but you didn't you want to get them worked up because if he got worked up, he got silly, he got rambunctious, and then you were going to get him. To, you had to find a way of getting them to settle down without barking at them because That's then what, mom would get Penny mad. Penny or Sears. Uh, neither one. It was called uh, uh, Family Photo New Generations. Okay. Okay. Oh, and man. it was it, it had uh, it had four studios. We did in house processing of the film, and uh, and loaded the film uh, and all that. I mean, we just go in had a dark room, so we go in and, and did color uh, processing. Printed out the uh, you got your uh, you got your your proofs within about an hour because uh, we were still shooting on silver at that time. Uh, digital cameras hadn't quite come out. Well, they were out, but no one bought them because the one they right. were they were actually lower quality than than silver. Yeah. So, but we we'd take pictures <laughs> and, and and all that, and it was great. I ended up getting a couple little side gigs. I'd do a wedding or two, and I did uh, did a photo for uh, for a local uh, gunslinger group. And uh, they would dress up in old West days, and then they'd go out to Paladero, and they'd have uh, 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 have gunfights and see quick draw contests and stuff. Oh, cool! So, yeah, it oh. was it was a lot of fun. Hey, and, you're uh, you're uh, you, you, you're eleven dollars an hour. Actually, yeah. uh, uh, for a year that was twenty two thousand eight eighty, and yeah, in nine this was nineteen ninety. You said right. Uh, yeah, well, 93. Okay, give or take. Uh, yeah. But but either way, well, okay, for a single person in 92, the poverty level was $7,143 a year. And 28745 for a family of nine or more. So... Uh, but a family. Well, I can tell you that was that somebody somebody did not know how to do their calculations properly because I was struggling to make ends meet. (laughs) I was having during that time. I was still doing. I was that was actually part of what I called my my uh, year of starvation. It's not that I wasn't eating, but I was eating ramen noodles, and that was a treat. That was. Hey, I had a few extra bucks, right? So I'm going to uh, I'm going to to uh, to to whoop it up and buy some ramen noodles. Most of the time, it was lettuce sandwiches. It was just cheap piece of bread. I could buy bread under a, under a dollar. I could get a head of lettuce for under a dollar. I could get that to last a week. Yeah, yeah, kind of like jam sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take yeah, two pieces yeah. of bread and jam them together. Jam them together. There you go. Yeah, by God. So, but no, I was, was just, yeah, I was just saying what. And what I didn't even senses. have a car oh, at wow. that time either. So I wasn't even having, I was driving, I was running around Amarillo on a, on a, on a mongoose bike. Back when mongooses were still quality bikes before they sold out to, yeah. uh, to, to a Chinese manufacturer and became uh, what you bought at Walmart. Right. So, 
and I would take it and uh, there for a while. I would, uh, whenever I was actually in, in college for uh, for two semesters, I did whole two whole semesters and realized, yeah, we're not doing this. Um, <laughs> I used to live over in Canyon, which is about twenty miles away, mm-hmm. and I would I actually spent I did it for a week. And after that, I was just like, screw this. I, I can't do this no more. And uh, I would end up using uh, my my aunt's car because I used to have a car. Actually, I won a car and then uh, went to make a right hand turn on a uh, on a country road. And mm-hmm. I looked left and proceeded to make a right hand turn and hit the back end of a uh, of a uh, of a uh, Suzuki sidekick. And uh yeah, my little Ford Escort uh, did not run right after that. So, oh damn, I bet not. So, and uh, so I just I could never get the money together uh, to uh, uh, to pay for the the uh, uh, pay for the insurance, uh, the down payment, or not the down payment, the premiums for the uh, uh, for the for the repair, and so ended up uh, just kind of selling it and uh, okay and stuff and. And I had to actually turn around and and uh, had other debts that I needed to pay off, and so I most of that money went away. And so I, after by the time I got whatever I was left, was uh, uh, didn't have enough to really buy a car. So yeah, I, for a long time I was I was uh, carless in in Amarillo. Still had a had an apartment, uh, had a roommate, and stuff, and. But yeah, it was just one of those where it was not a, uh, it was, it was, it was a rough time, but at the same time, it was, you, it was a, it was a great and wonderful learning experience, man. Right. And so after that, uh, after two years of that, about, uh, about 95, I was just like, all right, we, we've got to, we got to be doing something here. We got to change, uh, change this up. And so in, uh, in '95 is whenever I decided, all right, it's time we need to go ahead and start heading off into the Navy. And so '96, I joined up with Navy. Actually, I started out when I was wanting to go Air Force because I I'd heard that they had the easy life, and uh, and so I was like, hell yeah, man, let's do the Air Force, and went to go do the Air Force. And I had uh, had a uh, a kid by then. And she was a big old oops with a really ugly woman. Don't ever do that because it takes the fun out of everything. <laughs> and uh, and so, uh, they, since I was essentially a parent at that time, they, uh, the, uh, air force said, nope. And so I had to go, all right, who, since I can't, I'm not someone, I am very adverse to having bullet holes in me. I knew that the army wasn't a good place to go. The Marines surely wasn't a place to go. So the next place was the Navy, and I was like, "All right, let's see if the Navy will take me." And uh, and sure enough, they did, and became an operations specialist, and which is also known as a scope dope. I'm the guy. If you ever watch Hunt for Red October or any other Navy movie, and you see the guy who stands behind the clear screen writing numbers backwards, that was what that's an operations specialist did. That we're the ones that looked at the surface radar and 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 jotted stuff down on the bridge uh, uh, on on a piece of plexiglass backwards which was much to my wife's irritation because I did that so much. I would end up getting off of, uh, off my watch and I'd go to write her a letter and inadvertently start writing backwards. <laughs> <laughs> she could read part of it forward and had to use a mirror. Uh, to I had to go to the mirror and read what else was, what else I wrote. So. <laughs> well, Hey, you could at least write in code that way. Oh yeah. I can still write backwards. I can read backwards. It's great. It's awesome. So so all those little Facebook deals of if you can read this, you're smarter than the average person. It's like, yeah, no shit, I'm smarter than the average person. <laughs> well, I, I can write right. it backwards too. So, so anyhow, now that I have k- taken up a good chunk of the uh, of the stuff, what else do y'all got? What what's been uh, happening in your world there, Rich? Well, that's for because get let's get a little more detail out of you because you are not originally from the state that you're in. No, I am not. No, I was I was actually born and raised in Missouri most of my life and been all over. And I was actually living up there, and then I got cold. It got down to, like, 
negative 21 with a negative 45 wind chill foot and a half of snow on the ground. And my ass said, I'm out because I'm retired. And I'm like, ah, oh, hell no. So I jumped in my Jeep, threw some clothes in it. And I drove to Mississippi. Didn't know anybody for nothing. And, uh, actually I've met quite a few people here. They're all friendly. And, uh, right here on the Gulf. I mean, I drive any farther South. I got to put pontoons on the, on the Jeep. Otherwise yep. just, I just <laughs> think, you know, in fact, in fact, yesterday it was cool. See what well, all it was. Did I tell y'all this last night? I don't know if I did. Anyway, I was, I was at the VA and, uh, cause I, my head been swimming for like the past six months. Right. Well, the doc yeah. figured it out and said, said my freaking crystals in my ear were all out of whack. We all have. Oh, okay. So you've got, you got a little bit of vertigo going on. Yeah. And, uh, okay. and, and so she fixed it and as better, I think I have to go back and, and get it again because I'm, I'm still swimming a little bit. But anyway, yesterday when I was at the VA, it was crazy. I didn't know it. I was in, I was in doc was doing all these tests, had these goggles on and had to keep my eyes open. And she could see if my eyes were open or closed. I couldn't see shit cause it was dark. But anyway, I get down and I'm leaving. I it, man, it pouring rain. It just pouring rain. I get down to the thing and, uh, I mean, winds, I mean, straight line winds blowing really hard. It's like, what the hell? Well, the storm come through and, uh, well, the winds kicked down and everything like that. And I got my Jeep and took off. Well, I went down, uh, 90 and, uh, uh, I was going back East, man. The ocean was coming up on the beach. The waves were just chopping up. It was about halfway on the beach. And, uh, the road was, was, I mean, covered with water. And in some spots, it's called it was like, warming. Oh man, I'm telling you, it was, <laughs> uh, they, they said it dumped like three and a half inches. I in believe that matter of less than an hour and the roads were flooded. I'm driving down the road in my Jeep. I'm hauling ass about 30, 35 and hit these puddles and throw water up over my Jeep. Every car <laughs> around me just stopped right where they were. And they were like, we ain't going nowhere. And I just, I just kept, I just kept running through the puddles and throwing water. It was, it was fun. I had fun. So, but <laughs> yeah, I just, I just said, screw it. And came down here, didn't know nobody and found a place to live and having fun. So that's, that's about, I don't know. I just, I got a wild hair. I got, I got cold. Got hungry all for a cowboy. boy. All, all because you are old. And cold. <laughs> right. Right. Cause yeah, when it's cold, that boy here don't move. Oh yeah. No, I don't. No, I, I do not. No, I'm not. I will never go back to my hometown of Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh no. No, no. Yeah. There's entirely too much white air <laughs> that sticks on the ground. For too long of a time. I don't do snow. I'll watch it on TV. <laughs> but as far as shoveling it, no. Now no, driving it's... in it with a Jeep, that's fun. Oh yeah, that's fun. But but see the getting thing the is recovery, getting the recovery gear out of the Jeep. Because well, cars don't fare well in a snowbank. That's so why I had too much fun. <laughs> as well as a Jeep can fare a lot better in a snowbank. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. See, the thing is, uh, though, I can't watch snow even on TV. I get pissed. <laughs> I'm sorry. God damn it! Why is it so white? No. I get mad. It was old and cold. <laughs> right, right. No, I, I, I mean. It's 90 I mean, degrees outside. He's watching a Christmas story, just fuming. 
God damn it, there's too much cold white on there. Right. <laughs> or, or 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 that's like that's that's like if I'm playing my uh, PS5 and there's a game and it's got a it's got snow oh, scenes. Yeah, in it. like, the beginning oh, of Red Dead Redemption's just your oh, you, just your that, nemesis, ain't it? That, oh my god, that game pissed me <laughs> off. Took me like two fucking weeks to get through that, and I was cold the whole time. <laughs> I would know. Yeah, hell. No, that's why, hey, but that's isn't that cool though? Where I'm at. Do you do you notice the uh, the horse testicles when you were playing uh, Red Dead Two while they were in the cold? Really? Do you think I'm gonna look at horse testicles? No, I didn't you, notice okay, the okay, horse testicles. You've got to watch it just for the horse testicles. Honestly, <laughs> what? go up and go up and hang around in the cold area. Get up in the in the Grizzlies and hang around there for a little bit angle your camera down look at look at the danglies and then send your horse all the way down to uh down to lemoyne and then again look they actually drop when it's hot <laughs> when they're running around the cold they're all packed up but whenever it's hot they they go they go to dangling oh my god the details oh god. in that game uh, and yeah guys i another gamer so we've got two gamers and we get a, we were able to talk about that and talk about gaming uh rich and and ron they're able to sit around and they're able to they they talk jeeps uh, a lot and then me and and me and ron we sit sit around and we talk about uh roller skating i didn't do much roller skating i was nowhere near as as uh as as uh fanatical about roller skating because i spent most of my most of my time making sure that i my my tail end was thoroughly bruised so so that was my right. uh, same here <laughs> yeah i was talking oh, about so. roller skating when i was growing up because my mom uh we're and we we're talking very early in the conversation about single moms my my mom was a single mom and she worked at the skating rink so i got to go roller skating and i spent more hours a week on roller skates at the rink than i did in school on a five-day school day week that's cool dude that's cool man that's called fun yeah yeah and that was back in the day when the roller rink was the place to be was that the 80s was, no that was uh in the 70s okay late 70s or mid 70s uh mid 70s yes folks we are old and ancient we're not gonna lie but we don't care yep and the roller that's when everyone rink, roller skated with froze that that would turn two seconds after they turned their head <laughs> <laughs> sit there and turn it was so packed on that roller skating rink man you could barely move there were oh, so yeah. many people but that was the place to be <laughs> oh yeah I love those days so you've got now let's, let's go ahead and let's, let's look at a little bit of that uh, we'll That'll be another segment we need to come up with one is Ron's rink. Yeah, guys, uh, audience, uh, we're since we're still kind of, uh, you're kind of getting a, a backstage pass to, to our whole line of thinking. So <laughs> coming up with different, uh, different little, uh, little fun segments and stuff that we may cough, cough up from time to time. I was thinking like having Rich's Ron uh, or Rich's uh, ham sandwich. For uh, for whenever he wants to talk, he gets into uh, talking about uh, his ham radio. So, yeah, and that's and that's not just sandwich. That's that's sandwich. Sandwich. It's a m m i c h sandwich. So ham sandwich. Right. So, and then we got Ron's rink. Uh, that and I don't know. We'll come up with something, but uh, something with the Jeep topics. So, dude, but, me, oh yeah, dude, me and Root Beer are having a problem tonight. 
<laughs> I'm telling. So why you want? So why do you want to bring dude into your root beer problem? Because because you, you're dude, man. You're 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 just dude. So okay, <laughs> enlighten me with your root beer problem. I do. I, no well, I, I I'm glad you're the one that asked, Ron, because I'm I, there. I'm scared to have asked that. I'm like going okay. <laughs> Because he what doesn't is have with, any ice cream. Well, if you because if you ask an old man, uh, and he you hear him saying, "I'm having problems with some type of food product," there's probably something smelly going on too. <laughs> I don't know which end it's coming out of, but it sounds like there's a, some type of intestinal distress going on. I don't know what's going, what's a, what's a, what this is about, but. You're you're the one that opened up that can of worms, Ron. I'm gonna let him uh, just dish it out over to you. No, no, no. It just it just normally normally I can I can sit here like like on our calls and like drink water, drink root beer, drink coffee, drink whatever, and and make it through just fine. And then and oh. then after we get done, I I have to go to use the bathroom. This is the second time. Since we started this, that 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 I've had to turn my mic off <laughs> and go during the main vein, you know. So that root beer is uh, root beer. The, the rent on the root beer is expensive. This uh, this uh, <laughs> right. time, huh? It's very expensive, and root beer ain't cheap. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> root beer is not cheap. Well, no, I was noticing that it looked like it was just kind of the generic root beer. It's not a. It's not the high quality barks. So oh, oh I love barks, but oh, I want, do too. They want $7.99 a 12 pack down here for it. A 12 pack? A 12 pack, dude. $7.99. God yes, bless. And this this one here is is the best choice. Yeah, and this is the Walmart uh, brand. It was the 549. Gee, oh, no like, wonder. I guess yeah. guess the root beer uh plant is uh, is getting a bit scarce. I guess I don't know, man. It's but I don't buy it all the time. I just buy it once in a while. But a twelve mm -hmm. pack, twelve pack normally lasts me about a week, week and a half. Oh, okay. Because I say, wow. <laughs> well, hell yeah, man. Five forty nine for a twelve pack. That's expensive. Yep. Loud shit. Air is loud getting one expensive. What's that? For that matter. Yeah, air. <laughs> air is they're, getting they're expensive. Where they're going to start right. charging us. Well, yeah, I, I'm surprised they have not figured out a way yet with this. What are we in right now? Inflation? Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, well, well we're in the middle. We're well, in the middle of recession. Whatever it is, we're in the middle of Nobody has enough fucking money for food. Well, that's true. It is fucking ridiculous. Food's expensive. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Stupid expensive. Yeah. yeah. From yeah. from how long ago? What? Couple that's the years? change of the presidency. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's for damn sure it is. That's that's the only yeah. Well, change the president. There, a lot of the reason that it's getting to be as as expensive as it is, is, I mean, you look at what they're what they're doing with just beef itself. I mean, you've got you've got all uh, all three uh, of the uh, slaughter uh, companies kind of joining together. One, they're trying to come up with their own form uh, of fake meat, but then you also just uh, well, like the uh, the Panhandle fire, the the uh, Smokehouse Creek uh, fire that they uh, that they had go through and burnt up like a million acres or whatever. Oh it was. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Well, that that killed off a lot of cattle. That killed off a huge amount of cattle, and those are cat. Those are farmers and ranchers that aren't going to be able to come back. Right, right. And that's because of all the ESG bullshit that they're doing. The banks are not, uh, because the banks aren't allowed to give money to them because cows fart or whatever. And, you know, cows are contributing to global warming somehow. Though, 
the actual saliva in cows when they bite off the grass actually has a hormone that helps the grass grow back faster. Oh wow! Now, now the thing is, uh, I, I, I'll hold on here. But there, but the people are people are, uh, yeah. We're, we've lost a lot of the a uh, lot of the the ranchers that are in the Texas pan, Texas and Oklahoma uh, uh, area. Well, yeah, and, and say and say that's a sad thing, and and basically what it is fucking government wants to get up in it. Which, which they've actually been up in it. They just want to control more of it, and yeah. and uh, and uh, control the prices and uh, make all the profits and dag himself. Yeah. I mean, that's, well, that's, and you've and, got you've got what's his name, Larry Fink, which is just uh, the uh, all. If they're in a better comic book name for a villain, Larry right. Fink, Larry who is Fink, the head yeah. of uh, uh, the head of BlackRock, which is the largest. Uh, uh, investment firm out there um, has actually even said that they need to, their aim is to commoditize the cattle. They're actually wanting to go in and see, hey, how many heads of cattle do you have? Um, no, the government wants to thinks you've got too many cattle. You're you're creating too much CO two. You need to get rid of some of your herd. I mean, but, they're wanting to be able to control it to that granular level. Okay, and hold on, insane. hold on now. I mean, yeah, okay. This is something. This is something I never understood, and I don't think anybody can actually put my mind at ease about it. If if everyone is worried about how a cow fucking farts over here in the U.S., don't uh -huh. don't freaking cows fart over in China, South America, and Argentina? I mean, I mean, who cares if a cow farts over here in the U.S. because it's not going to have an impact on the freaking ozone. Well, because we are, we have more money. We are more. Do we have we more are, money? China, what you want to bet China has more money than us? Well, Hell, China, China has, owns. China owns. has most of our, has most of our, our debt. Yes. Yeah. And, but at the same time, they're actually, they're struggling. Really? They're, they're oh yeah. They're the, we have the, Na the, the, the world itself. All these, all these, like the World Economic Forum and all, uh, and all these dipwads who think they they know know all they know all that needs to be known. And you know, you have uh, what is the uh, modern monetary theory, where it's essentially Keynesian uh, theory of you can spend yourself out of debt. Type of type of backwards ass thinking. <laughs> You've got. What do you they, think Joe they, Biden's been can, doing you, for the last three years? Inflation. They, they think inflation is good. It's like, oh no, it's good to have inflation. No, yeah. it's, uh, and it's why, like, oh, how how good is it that moms, you're in debt? That's why. That's why single moms can't buy formula for their kids. Right. That's why exactly. And they their their excuses. Oh well, debt took off too quickly. Oh no, no the fact that we are, are not debt, but uh, inflation took off too fast. It's like no, inflation anytime is bad. Inflation is theft. Yeah, it is because your one dollar that you think you have is actually worth you know seventy five cents. Hmm. And so you now instead of having to spend a buck two dollars for for a coke, you're now actually having to spend three uh, three fifty. And yeah. so, no, it's, it's, it's a, it's a form of theft. I mean, it's as bad of a theft as taxation. I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. Right. And, right. you know, because everybody thinks that, well, and, and the fact that, and I'm no fan of, of Google, I'm no fan of Apple, I'm of any of the big tech corporations out there, but um, they're, they're starting to go after Apple right now because why, why? because they're, too good they made too good of a product and the the what, sherman act jealous uh everybody else is yeah they're they're complaining about the fact that they charge too much money for their phone that other uh other companies can't have their store in in the apple uh ecosystem they want to uh, be able to bypass because apple charges 30 percent Right, right. Yeah, I know um, that. To, so if you're selling something through Apple, 
Well, Apple's going to charge you, or it's going to take right off the top 30% of your, of right. your, uh, and they just got finished getting sued over in, over in the European Union. And so they're like, well, all right, fine. And they're doing the bare minimum of what they're supposed to do, which is giving it a really crappy experience, which is great. Right. They did the same thing with Google and where Google, they had too good of a product. Right. Their, their advertising model, that are, which is how they make money, was too good. And everybody's bitching, well, there's, they're, they're doing, uh, they're advertising their stuff over mine. Well, well yeah, it's their damn shit, man. Well, if you want right, to have but, your own, if you want to be, get your stuff advertised over Google's, then make your own damn search engine that's better than Google. Right, right. Yeah. So, and that's the, that's the, the main complaint that I've had, even with, with, uh, back when, uh, they decided they wanted to try to break up Microsoft. Yeah. The same thing. Microsoft yeah, was too damn good. Yeah. Microsoft had, uh, and it, it wasn't because of the browser. Everybody knows it wasn't because of the browser. That's the excuse they said. Well, they, you, they, the internet explorer is on there automatically. It was on there automatically any afterwards, anyhow. Right. But what did everybody do? They would go and download Firefox. They would go and they'd download, you know, eventually it went to Chrome. And Opera and Star. And, and Opera. And it was yeah, because all kinds. Internet Explorer was crappy. We knew that, but brand new internet users were just going, well, there's Internet Explorer. That works for me. And that right. did. It did the job. It well, did the job very poorly until people realized, oh, wait a minute. Firefox yeah, runs a little better. Right. And they discovered it. Well, see, and and you see something else, something else too. And, and I mean, you know, if I'm wrong, say something. Uh, but Apple, Microsoft, and Google all built their shit from the ground up. Yeah. And they I made mean, them really goddamn good. And, and 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 now everybody's pissed because, oh, my God, you've got all this. We can't compete. We you've got, got a monopoly. Well, Monopolies yeah. are actually a good thing. Yeah. I'm one of those. Like, and I am, a, of course, I am a firm believer as to what Ayn Rand said about what capitalism is. If you were to make a laissez-faire capitalistic society, you would have, you would still have highs, you would still have crashes, you would still have depressions, you would have recessions, you'd have all that. But they would recover faster. You would have monopolies. Naturally, you would have monopolies. And that's actually a good thing because that means that the person is doing it the cheapest, and is selling it for the cheapest possible. Right. And you have a lot of people going around, no, well, they, they, they raise their prices. And the moment they raise their prices, in comes a competitor undercutting them. Mm -hmm. And so they have to lower, they naturally have to keep their prices low. But when the government comes in and goes, hey, no, you've, you've got to act this way, like the Sherman Act. The Sherman Act is, uh, if you read uh, uh, Atlas Shrugged, the Sherman Act is is in there. That is one of the anti doggy doggles out there. Okay, and it is the reason that we now have the reason why, like uh, Ma Bell, the the telephone company uh, Bell Telephone, right, was was a, a natural monopoly. It was created by the government. And that is why all the way up into the 70s, you had the black bowling ball telephones mm -hmm. that were heavy and that and you didn't actually own that telephone. You rented it. It's like the like the cable boxes. Right, right. You you actually ha had to rent the telephone to be able to talk to people. And it wasn't until they did busted up the 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 telephone company busted up Ma Bell and took away their opportunity to hold the to hold that that extreme and all of a sudden took all the the telephone uh, companies broke them up into little bitty kingdoms where you, you still you might have Southwestern Bell is going to be your telephone uh, provider for you know for the Amarillo area right. Um, which then eventually it 
it crumbled and went under and it uh, went to wind. I think Windstream has it now. I don't know who all it bounced around to from there. But then all the prices started going down because yeah, you introduced competition, but you, we wouldn't even have to worry about that if the government off right off the bat didn't say, hey, this is uh, uh, you're the only one who could actually have a uh, – uh, do the telephone. And I right. think their whole, their whole deal deal was, you know, because they put up the lines. That very okay. well could be. And I, I get that. But then again, you could also rent, you know, they, he could have rented the lines out. It could have made a lot more money if he had actually. Right. Had tried to be the best instead of just trying to hold a, a monopoly. And because when the government gets involved, that gets the monopoly that everybody's afraid of. Right. That's the monopoly that, oh, there's no innovation. Well, no shit, there wasn't any innovation. We had invisible telephones. We had phones you could see the guts on and that lit up after after they busted it up. You know, we had the Snoopy phone and the Mickey Mouse phone and all the great phones the and the phone, yeah. the, the lip phone. and The and, football <laughs> phone. Yeah, the football phone. I mean, we had all these great and wonderful phones in the late seventies, or uh, and all the through eighties. I mean, oh my God, the eighties were the best when it comes to telephones. Oh yeah. All did. of a sudden, the prices of telephones dropped, and not, all the kids started having their own phone in the uh, in, in their, their bedrooms. Room. Oh yeah, yeah. That was hey, like... which kind of took the fun out of, out of you know taking the phone and stretching it across the house to to the bathroom. I but at the same time. Days. Oh, hell yeah. That was, that was awesome. But at the same time, you know, we had, I, me and me and my sister had a phone. I couldn't tell you what the phone number was anymore. It's not like we talked to anybody, everybody I knew in, in the town that I lived in, you didn't have, you know, we could call Dumas. <laughs> that was the only other town we could call. That was a local phone call. Right. Everybody else was long distance. I wanted to call Borger. That was a long distance call. I, I wanted to call Perryton. It was a long distance call. If I wanted to call Amarillo to, uh, to do a, uh, to, to do a, 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 a shout out to my girlfriend for the moment on the radio, Z 93, Texas best rock, 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 <laughs> which was just, uh, that was the station everybody listened to unless you were a banger. And I think it was, uh, one Oh seven, nine. There for a okay. while it was a, it was a pop station also, but then uh, one Oh seven, nine turned into a, into a hard rock station unless okay. you were the cool kid. And then you discovered, uh, uh, FM 90, which was the uh, college stations, uh, colleges, uh, radio station. And they played just different types of music. And Friday night at, uh, at 10 o'clock, nine or 10 o'clock was, uh, was, uh, dead end street. And that was where all the really good music came out. So, Oh, wow. Oh yeah, you got to learn about really good music like Mucky Pup and uh, and Three Dead Gophers. That was a that was a good song. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, sounds like the sounds like the Doctor Demento show. Uh, uh, they did. They had Doctor Demento on Saturday mornings. Really? So yeah, yep. You got uh, poisoning pigeons in the park and uh, and uh, 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 kick to the boot to the head and uh, and and all those greats. So, yeah, a Scotsman, I, another great, uh, another great uh, song. So, oh heck yeah, it's where I Why first got introduced to uh, to Weird Al. Oh my Weird gosh, Al. that that's crazy. Mine was KRFX one zero three five one zero three five. Mine was ninety six seven KCFN, <laughs> and believe it or not. They're still rolling with the. Oh, really? The, okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, Z93 is too, except I don't, uh, actually, I don't even know if they still call it Z93. I think, it, I know they don't play the same music. It's more hip hop now, but, but uh, well, everything, yeah. is, everything is hip hop except for, you know, the stuff that we like to listen to. Then you have to get theories or, um, oh, what is the other one that I have? Hold on. Um, I Heart Radio. Okay. The, uh, yeah. So here, here's a here's a something to help the younger kids and the younger folks who are listening. When you were growing up, did y'all have a radio station that was called the Cat? 
called the cat. Yeah. Usually spelled with K is K A T. Yeah. It was something. It would always be, it seemed like every town I went to that had a radio station, like Dallas, Dallas had a cat. They also had the zoo, which was a, a, a great rock station. Oh my God. The rock oh, station. Yeah, uh, yeah, Dallas yeah. was that, amazing. That one in Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. I remember but, that one. But there was a, there was, there always seemed to be, everybody had a radio station that was called the cat. Oh, wow. And uh, so I was just, I didn't, I didn't, and I was just kind of checking to see if, if y'all, where y'all grew up at, if y'all had a cat also, because that's just kind of been one of those things that I've always kind of been fascinated by it was uh, the yeah. whole cat. And ours was like 104, 9, 104, 8, uh, 7, something like that. It was, it was out on the cl- farther end of the of the dial. It wasn't quite right. in the middle. But no, uh, we, up in Lincoln, Nebraska, we didn't have the cat. Okay. Well, we, uh, the only however, one that... however, you just talked about, um, the zoo. Yeah. Man, that is an excellent song. And who sings the zoo? Uh, uh I didn't, yeah, know dude. I, I, I would fail yeah, at that yeah. trivia. Oh, um well i'll get back with you on that okay um scorpions scorpion sings the zoo oh i don't think i heard that one Ooh, from uh, that's Man, one i hadn't have, heard yeah oh you're gonna have to get on scorpions and the zoo excellent song huh so yeah no i'm i remember as close as i can come to uh Anything resembling a cat is ninety three three the fox. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, no, that's uh, I mean, yeah, as far as yeah, cat. I, I, and <laughs> oh God, I just remembered something. But <laughs> me and a friend, uh, we used to sit around and we used to make this, uh, and I couldn't even t- remember how to make it, but we used to drink, uh, make this concoction from time to time. Whenever I had the ex, uh, had uh, everything paid off, and I had you know even had a really good, good paycheck where I had like maybe five, $10 extra. Mm -hmm. We'd sit down and (laughs) split his, uh, share, uh, me and my roommate, we would share, uh, put, uh, our money together and we would buy the ingredients for something that we called moose piss. And all I really remember is that it's something with Kool-Aid or not Kool-Aid, but lemonade Mickey's big mouth beer. Oh, no way. Yeah. 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 And we, that, and it was a couple other, uh, items that were thrown in there and we would sit around and we would drink this thing this this crap until we would just be just slobbering drunk but we had fun we came up with the best radio station and all the plugs for it and it was k-o-c-k the cock and we could wake up in the morning with the big cock you know, <laughs> and we had all these taglines for it, man. I mean, we, so, oh yeah. I mean, granted, we would never be able to do it because I know the FCC would go, uh, no, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it was just, oh my god, it was so, it was so much fun because we were just like, yeah, yeah, we got the, we could, we could have the, uh, uh, the, the traffic cock or the traffic, and it would be, you know, a rooster would be kind of our part of our logo, but. Yeah, we had we had the uh, the traffic rooster out there, and he was give he would give us all the uh, all the all the, the traffic details of what ha- was happening in Amarillo, right. which is never anything, because even well, even now Amarillo has traffic where I forty will slow down to maybe forty miles an hour. And people just lose their ever living mind. <laughs> really, <laughs> because the traffic never actually stops. Granted, Amarillo's got the longest damn street lights in the history of man. Right. I swear that I swear you age. You know, <laughs> you feel yourself age by the time the light changes. You've got all of a sudden you start driving. You're like, oh god, I've got a pain in my hip. Why is this from? So <laughs> <laughs> I've been but, sitting you know, there we, for six years. It's been six, and and I I actually and fully understand if you don't step on the gas the moment that puppy turns green and people honk at you 
they know they're going to be there for another two years and they do not want to wait that long. <laughs> and so I get it. I'm like, I hear a beep. Most of the time I I'm I'll, depending on what town I'm in. Cause if, if, if I'm like in, in a, in a rougher part of a rougher town, I won't do this just because I, I do, I, I like to live. And so, but other places, if I am feeling in a, in a pissy mood or I'm just feeling extra snarky, somebody honks at me, I actually will throw it into park and look out the window and go, yeah. And, <laughs> and they'll honk at you again. And I'm like, if they honk again, then I usually will stand out and kind of go over there and go, you need something. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, I've only been able to do it twice because most of the time my wife's with me and she's like, you not get your ass out of it. And so I, <laughs> okay, yes, ma'am. <laughs> but the two times that I've had is like one guy that, Probably wasn't really the smartest because the guy started getting out too. And I was just like, well, what are you needing? It's like, need you to go. It's like, well, why are you honking at me then? Don't get my attention. I'm trying to figure out what you were needing. I thought you knew me or something. <laughs> but oh, shit. like I said, I've only been my, in all my life. I've one. only been in all my life. I've only done it twice. And, uh, and, and so far I've still got all fingers and toes and I haven't been aerated in any weird places. So, well, so this is it, a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing. Uh, and, but there, like I said, there, there was one guy who I, if I, if, if, uh, if he was, if he had had any uh, today, nowadays though, might you know, it might be okay over Mississippi, but uh, it, uh, there, there's some places around, around in the bigger cities. I you no, know, I'm not about to do that because they're more likely to have some, someone come running up to you with a baseball bat. And then, well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and, I keep seeing, I've seen plenty of videos of, of people who are actually road raging and they come stomping out of there and then they instantly get dropped. So, so people are, people are carrying because a lot of, a lot of idiots running around these yeah. days. Yeah, there is a lot There's, of people who are caught in their own emotions and it's sad. It is. And, and, you know, honestly, I think, I, I think we have more idiots than sane people today. That's right. just my opinion. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'll blame you know. the school system personally. So, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Which pisses teachers off. That's, uh, that's the big, uh, I, I love the teachers. I've got, I, I'm still, I, I, not great other Facebook friends, but I still am Facebook friends with like my first grade teacher and my, my English teacher, which was uh, another, uh, my, uh, my lower level English teacher was uh, Mrs. Parsons or no, no Ward Ward Haynes was the freshman sophomore. And I think Mrs. Parsons came in afterwards because I think he retired shortly after that. Well, say, I can't, say I can't remember. Is, Anyhow, I know she was she was English. She was an English teacher, maybe just right. been a literature. But anyhow, she was she was one of those who taught me one of the biggest lessons out there. And that was if she said something and you got offended, her catchphrase was build a bridge and get over it. Right. And to watch all of these high school kids just get kind of incensed over it but not being able to say anything because, well, she's right. <laughs> yeah. You were just like, Oh, well, Oh my God, you hear that? And you know, and this is, you know, late eighties, early nineties. I graduated in 92. And so she, it was around the, you know, about 80, 1990 to 92 in that area. She, it was, she would tell you just build a bridge and get over it and go do your work. And, Everybody would just be like, oh, what? And, you know, right. what did she say? Type of thing. And just, it was, it's one of the best ones that I still actually use today because, I mean, there are teachers, they're great. But sadly, these days, there's a lot of teachers who aren't teaching for the sake of teaching. They're teaching, they're, they're there just for the paycheck. They don't really give a crap of what they're teaching the kids. Well, and, as a matter of fact, most of them are teaching kids stuff that doesn't need to be taught in school. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it's going to say. It's like, it's like learn. Yeah. I mean, I mean, teach these kids, but you see, the thing is they freaking went to college to be a teacher and look at how they were taught. Yeah. yeah so, they were. so they're just, 
they're just going along with the, you know, cycle. Right. And you like know, great, and, the late, great Rush Limbaugh said they were just a bunch of school uh, skulls full of mush. Right. And, and yeah, we, uh, even at my, whenever I was in college and I heard that and I was just like, oh my God, what the goal of this, you know, I would get mad at the fact of his, of him calling it, it, I was taking it so personally that he was calling me a skull full of mush. And I was like, I'm, I'm studying, I'm working hard. And you know, it all, it takes after your great awakening, which your everybody's great awakening is typically around the age of 26. That's when you kind of start figuring out who you are yeah, and you okay. kind of figure out what your, what your standards are, what your values are. <clears throat> And that's also where you hear the pop and the pop is when you, that's the sound that one hears when they successfully dislodge their head from their ass. Yeah. And it's about 26 when all of a sudden you're going, Oh damn it. My mom and dad were actually a little smarter than I thought they were. Well, 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 no, hold it. Hold it. You say 26, but I was probably a little longer. I was probably closer to 30 when, when I heard the well, pop, so, it, it's know. just it, it, that's the average. Some, I, I've, there's some well, people who hear the pop when it's about 21, and others here don't hear the pop until they're like 58. So it's you know, <laughs> hey, hey, Ron, Ron, do you want to weigh yeah, in on this? Do, do you yeah, want to weigh on it? Go ahead. What's, what's that, dude? <laughs> what's up, dude? Dude, what do I want to weigh in on? Any well, of what have we been talking about? Anything. I mean, the teachers, head, you're a head <laughs> popping out your ass, you know, whatever. It's how good. A loud dude. and thunderous kaboom. <laughs> kind of like Marvin, kind of like Marvin and the Martian. Marvin, <laughs> the, Marvin the Martian. What happened to the earth shattering kaboom? <laughs> there was supposed to be an earth shattering, shattering kaboom. <laughs> Looney Tunes, yes. Then there was, was the no, plutonium yeah. P thirty eight space modulator. Yes, yeah. You know, it's it, yeah. I don't, uh, I can't remember when my uh, head popped out of my ass. I think it might have been last week, maybe. No. Maybe yesterday. I don't know. What? Maybe two uh, weeks ago. Possibly. Okay. It, it, it hasn't been too long ago. Oh, okay. I think it was cool. after. I think it was after I retired. <laughs> but, Dude, but, you're still working. You haven't retired yet. Yeah, I know. I can't freaking afford to retire. But you know, that's my life. My, I should say, my dumpster fire of a life. But you know, well, you do okay. know that uh, that that uh, in there is no word for retirement for in the Hebrew language, right? Well, okay. And the reason why is because well, they later. there was no reason to one. Well, one when men retire. Typically, they only last five years after retirement, and then right. they die. The reason is That's because most, the, most of the men, when they retire, they don't they they don't have a purpose. They they retire thinking that they're just going to be able to just sit around and do nothing, and that is a guaranteed way of. That's just a slow suicide. Yes, it is, and so. That's why you see so many older men who are still alive who go and work at Walmart, even if it's just as a greeter. Get your shit and get out. Get your shit and get out. <laughs> so <laughs> welcome to Walmart. No, no, no. Get your shit and get out. Yeah. Get out as soon as I see your receipt. Oh, fuck that. I just want oh, yeah, oh no. And that's something no. me and my wife don't do. We won't we don't play the receipt game. No, well, sometimes no. we will. Why? You know, okay, you can't trust me to be my own cashier. Exactly. If you're wanting then, me, then if you're, you're expecting to try to police me because I'm now doing the self-checkout thing that you wanted me to do, 
that's your bad, man. That's on you. Oh, but yeah, still, I, I, I personally still go through the through the, the other registers. I like to have the other person check out because I like to make sure that the other person is being paid for what they're being paid for. Right, right. Oh, I no, no, I don't. I don't use a self checkout unless I don't have a choice. You know, right. And but at and, the same you know, time. And the bad thing about it is, is I did not get either a W-2 or a 1099 from Walmart. That's right. Yeah. For being it, a checker. Yeah. They, they but, essentially have got you, got you for free labor. And, and so then, and if then, they're, if they're and then still want to check your receipt, check, check your receipt to make sure you didn't steal from them. Yeah. No, kiss my ass. And that's, and that's why me and my wife both, if we're, if, if, if there is a line of people who are waiting to check out, which is usually around the Christmas time, they'll go, can we see, uh, see a receipt? I'll hand the receipt and I'll just keep walking. And the looks that. that you get from the people are, what the hell? You, don't, don't you, what, I don't care if they had a receipt. I'm, I bought my food. If I eat it and I don't like it, am I going to be able to return the turd to you and go, I want my money back? <laughs> no. <laughs> So it doesn't do me any good. Right. So, you know, it yes. does if I if yeah, I decide you don't like I don't it, scoop your turd up and throw it in a in a in a in a Walmart bag and take it back. To take them. it back to him. It's like then that stuff did not fill me up at all. It <laughs> ran right through me, man. I, I want my money back. It didn't do the job. And no, so you were you got it, you're gonna have to, you know, it, it doesn't do any good to keep the receipt. Now, if we're going through and we've got Christmas bought and stuff, then yeah, okay, we're going to hold on to the receipt and we'll just go ahead and stand there. And yeah, uh, because if we've got a bunch of un, un, unwrapped or uh, unbagged stuff, I get it. Where what? did you just take those bags? But am I going to spend the time to bag up every damn thing and somewhere in the middle not bag something? And and try to steal it in front of the of the register lady. Well, no. well, the thing is, what about what about the 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 five hundred cameras that they have mm -hmm. in Walmart? Oh I hell mean, yeah! And 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 they still think they have to put someone at the exit door. Oh, I need to see your receipt. You, you're like, uh, congratulations! The... I know you don't have a don't have a purpose, and that they're trying to find something for you to do. And God bless you. I mean, there's one guy. I think his name's Kevin, and and, and so I've gotten around to talking with him a little bit. But uh, but most of the time, I, we go through. He's like, if there's no one there, and he's just kind of standing there, and he's like, hey, can I see your receipt? And I'm like, oh, sure, yeah, man, here, here, I'll show it to you. Because I can usually tell what set them off. Like, if I've got a big-ass bag of dog food sitting underneath the uh, underneath the basket, I have forgotten to pay for the dog food before. Well, okay. So, oh, yeah. And okay, that's what? usually what they're looking at. Actually, I 15, don't even think 20 they, they look at Dog food, 15, 20 bucks. No, uh, you haven't bought dog what? food in a while, have you? No, dog no, food I is typically it. a 40 pound bag of dog food, costs typically anywhere from 40 to 80 bucks. These oh days. my god, no yeah. way! Way Dude. now, you can get you can get the Purina, you know, and that's still 30 bucks. Oh, wow, for a 40 that's, pound bag, that's but crazy. That's you know you're getting the 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 shit scr uh, scraps of, of the shit scraps, right? That this is the stuff even the premium dog food people are going. Oh, that's that's crap. Oh, that's bad. That's <laughs> it's the stuff the navy <laughs> won't even eat. They're going. Yeah, we're not going to give that. You know. Oh damn! And, the navy, and we've had navy stuff won't like that. No, navy no. Won't I, I mean it. that we've now. had we've had stuff where from you know. I literally have and people think that this is a, uh, a joke, but there are times when I was in uh, part of the stocking party where uh, while we were out at sea, uh, they would uh, we would ha be doing uh, have restocking uh, drills where we'd pull up alongside of a tender and they would bring send over all the groceries and stuff, uh -huh. which is a shit ton of groceries because we got 5000 people on on board. Right. And so we would have to, it, all of us lower, uh, uh, lower ranked guys would all be part of the, uh, of the stocking party. And we would 
go down and from the freezers on up to the uh, up to the hangar bay we would all just start passing uh passing frozen goods and stuff down and part of it would there'd be times where you would see you know like department uh california department of corrections types of food like boxes of meat and it would be you know it would they would have rejected on it so they oh would send God. it on over to the uh, to the army and what it was it's just it was it, a lot of times it was just some type of meat like hamburger meat or whatever right. what, why they rejected it maybe it had too much fat i don't know but it was just always we always just found it really fascinating that we we got we got the handoffs from uh, from the from the uh the prison system so. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was just but at the same time, I can't complain too bad because I mean, there's plenty of times we ended up having steak and lobster on the uh, on the ship. That would be cool. And I mean, granted, it was it was not red lobster style lobster tails because I mean, it was it, they they when you're cooking that much food, you can't make it great. Great, it's right. going it, it's going to come out as eh, it's all right. It's pretty good. Because hey. I mean, because you got to have lobster, and it was still in the tail and all that, and you had to cut it out. But at the same time, it was overcooked lobster, so it was a rubber. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was you could drop it so on it the, turns, on the so it so it turned from lobster to squid. It, it well, no, it was squid was juicier than 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 the than that. It was it was so overcooked. I mean, you could actually probably have thrown it up thrown it on the on the table and it would have bounced. Just <laughs> so wow. but it was I mean it is but at the same time the, when it came to like uh like Thanksgiving, say we were we were had actually entered the Straits of Hormuz and we're just going up to uh up to the uh, the Persian Gulf during uh on Thanksgiving Day. It's just happened how how uh, everything all ended up, and we still had kick ass turkey. Granted, I was working down in the Chiefs mess, so I had incredible kick ass turkey. Oh damn! And gravy, and uh, that because that was if you were going to mess crank, which is uh, uh, kitchen uh, KP for 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 the rest of you lower uh, lower. Uh, folks what what lower folks the, lower, lower folks, folks? yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we 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 didn't just go do kitchen patrol we we got to do cranking and we were mess cranking and if you did if if you were uh, mess cranked enough you eventually wound up in the chief's mess and the chief's mess was the shit man I mean, this is better than the officer stuff oh no way oh yeah way i mean you had because the officers they they got all their shit handed to them and so, the, and but the chiefs they would come down and they'd ha- you they had their own coffee mug, so you had to know start paying attention who washed their coffee mugs, who didn't, because uh-huh. if you wash the chief's coffee mug that he doesn't like to be washed, you got yelled at. Oh, <laughs> yeah, from you experience. Think? Yeah, and he's like, God damn it, you know how long it took me to walk, get that flavor just right? Now it's not going to taste right. Oh. It was dirty, man. It was, you had oh, coffee no. flaking off on the damn shit. It was terrible, you know. Oh, dude, but, dude, but, that is like prime. That is like <laughs> prime, prime flavor it's right like, there. Ah, what, dude, what the I, hell are you doing? I'm I washed by shit. I'm going. Oh, I mean, no, it, yeah. <laughs> oh no, that's wrong. That's dude. You I will wash that pantina off every single time. No, no, you're taking <laughs> old man. You you don't. That's even almost as, see that's my almost as bad right as the uh, as the line off of um, No Country for Old Men when uh, Tommy Lee Jones goes in to see his uncle. Uh-huh. I think it was his uncle, anyhow. And uh, he goes to pour the coffee. Goes to pour the coffee, and he stops, and he looks at him and goes, "Is this fresh?" And he's like, "I make a new po- a new pot once a week, whether I need it or not." It's like, "Oh my <laughs> God! All Holy right. crap!" Weak old coffee. Oh my God! What is pro? I've had coffee where that I forgot to empty out. You know, I'd yeah. go off on. I'd Jan would be off uh, off seeing a friend or whatever, and I took off on Monday and left some coffee in the in the coffee pot and not thinking about it. And I'd come back, and there would be shit growing in it. And well, that's yeah. just five days. That's so a, to think that that's normal. 
That's oh, normal. No. No, Dump it, it out, it, rinse it I, out, I, make another pie. You're good. You wash it out, scrub no, it out. No, then no, make no. It. Rinse. Yes, hell rinse. yeah. No. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't say nothing about no washing. I said rinse. I, I'm washing. <laughs> no, you don't have to wash. Just rinse it out. But, no, no, you, you yeah, wash. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. Just, just rinse it out and make you another pie. It'll be fine. If you agree with Rich or disagree with Rich. <laughs> rchelson at gmail.com <laughs> let him oh, know oh hold it hold it you haven't even <laughs> you haven't even given out oh, your I'm, email yet and no i haven't given my email out yet Why not? it's it's going because we haven't gotten to the closing yet well, so hold it we don't we don't we don't have to wait till the closing well well when you get if you get yourself in the word uh any word in edgewise then Throw my name and throw, throw circlecast at gmail.com. Yeah, out there. circlecast See, there you at gmail.com because and that is circle yeah. as in a round thing. Cast is in like a like a fish casting. All one word, no spaces, nothing at gmail.com. Yeah. And you'll when you type it in uh, in Gmail, you'll see my big old ugly grill show pop up in there. So so you <laughs> and, and see, we ain't even gonna do my email address. Oh my god, dude, you yeah, no, yeah, people and, would just go nuts. And the reason why is because I don't check my email, my address. I don't check email. I might once a week see, okay, all the Gmails that I've gotten from whatever sources and just start going through and delete. But, dude, hang on, hang on, dude. What what happens if, if like, everyone starts to like you and and – want to get in touch with you man i mean so you just give me your phone number <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 give him my phone number yeah that's 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 it yeah <laughs> yeah hey, dude we, we'll do hey. we'll do my we'll do my gmail Ron will start getting crank calls at three o'clock <laughs> in the morning dude <laughs> dude you can have your own fan base man Think about it. People be be just you know you know fan basing on on you just because your name is dude, just because my name is dude. Well, dude is gonna hold off just a little while. <laughs> I want to see how I want to see how you guys is go because I I seriously. Uh-huh. Do not check my Gmail oh, at I all. It. I, pro- I probably have 400 emails that I haven't opened or looked at. Well, easily 400. Just saying you probably don't need to. So, yeah, I would mess delete them. Just go ahead and just declare email bankruptcy and start fresh. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Email hey, I do it about it. once a year. I'll, uh, there's, uh, I've got a, uh, one, one, uh, set of labels that I hold on to, and it's, just, it's called family. And it's because I've actually got emails still for my dad, uh-huh. uh, and who's been gone for 12, no, 14 years now. Oh, wow. God damn. That's a long time. So, but yeah, he's been gone since, um, 2010 and I've still got some of his old, uh, his old emails. And so I just hold on to those just for posterity's sake because right. I'm, I'm taking them from time to time. I'll just whenever I happen to think of it, it's like, oh yeah, I need to throw some of those emails up on to uh, up on the ancestry so that we've got documentation of you know of dad and his style of writing and and all that. Okay, Not that okay. you would actually give him a, a show anything a scan of anything of his actual handwriting because nobody could read it. Even dad, he couldn't read it. He couldn't so. even read his own handwriting. <laughs> no, he couldn't. He's like, I don't know what I wrote there. What is that? Hey, like, that must not be important. Damn it, dad. What? <laughs> you know, it was it was a cure to cancer, probably, and he couldn't read it. So he just, yeah, yeah I was like, oh, <laughs> just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, but anyhow, so yeah. All right. Well, guys, we are going to be we're in the uh, the final 10 minutes or 15 minutes or so of the uh, of the show. So I wanted to just say that typically or in this area, wanted to start kind of 
bringing it around and start this being a value for value show. What is value for value? I kind of started to talk about it and then we went off on a tirade, found a, found a uh, rabbit trail and just got completely lost. So bringing it back normal. home. Yes. Value for value is time, talent, treasure. You, we like it when you send us a, a Satoshi, send us uh, the fiat currency, send us all those, the, the money, not that we're to, to do it so that we get rich, but we'd like to just have the money so we can pay for our the hosting bills and, and, and stuff like that for, for the site. We eventually will have a website and have bigger, better things. We've got, uh, got a, a, a plan laid out just depending upon how much money we have available. But also, if you don't have the money, but you still found anything that we're doing worthy of, of something, maybe it's talent. Maybe you're good at graphic design. You could actually come along and and uh, create, or, or maybe it's talent. And you're 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 uh, when it comes to graphic design, you do a kick-ass job. So you want to create a custom. Uh, episode art we we could always oh, handle yeah. some episodic art some some chapter art we could always start uh break this up because of podcasting 2.0 we can we're going to be having to do chapters. we're going to be able to do chapters we're going we to be able chapters, to do chapters art links yeah and, and if and you do send we are us not graphic booster. designers by the way oh no no i mean i the 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 actual album art it was something that I was able to just do through Canva and I, I can I can manage but oh people can do so much better than I can. They oh. make it a whole lot more simpler and I and I love simple the 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 beauty of simplicity is 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 the great one. So if you can do that, if you have the time, maybe you want to go through and you want to set up the uh the chapters for the uh for the podcast. You know, welcome to do, go through to do that. Reach out to me, circlecast at gmail.com. Just say, hey, I want to want to jump in. I want to help where I can. We can we'll offload as much as we we're able to, other than you know, we have to kind of show up to to do the recording. But we're gonna I've got plans for uh for this show. We've got plans to help see to have y'all actually show up and become a part of the show itself, become right. a, a producer of the show type of thing where if you're if you help to produce bring the show to uh, fruition we're going to find ways of ha telling you thank you we're going to have ways of, of of recognizing the the time that you put into uh into whatever it is you've done maybe it's uh you're we get around to doing an old-fashioned forum or something maybe we'll have uh two grumpy uh men and and do for, uh, bulletin board style form just out of for shits and giggles because you know hell why not right. <laughs> and, well we can and, do a discord because i mean or, 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 or yeah we can do discord or chats like that. Or, or 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 we could do What's discord that? we could do yeah i mean there's many 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 different things we could do and it's all just but it just has a matter to be of, simple because dude is technically challenged well, really yeah, is. that's what we're going to do is we, we want to confuse the hell out of dude and get him <laughs> as uncomfortable as possible because he claims that he is technically uh, deficient. And I want to show him that uh, you, you've he, he's figured out how to do some things on, on his phone. I bet you we could teach him how to do more things. And so not not enough to where we frazzle his his uh, his head. But at, at the same time, just something to just push him out of his comfort zone just just a smidge because that's where we all grow so this is where very, very typically much, what and i can and i completely un, and do completely understands that and is appreciative um i just want to break in and add one note to our overall conversation okay. as for the three of us being veterans right now we have a crisis in our country it's 22 a day veterans suicide rate if you know a veteran i'm talking to everybody out there if you know a veteran that is struggling talk to them it, it there's a lot of people that a lot of veterans, all they want to do is talk 
And if we could bring the suicide rate from 22 a day to zero, that would be awesome. But just know that there are a lot of vets like myself that are struggling, PTSD, a lot of demons. Um, if you know a vet that is struggling, please get them some help. 988. Dial 988 and make sure you press 1. You will talk to a veteran or a family member of a veteran, someone who knows veterans. Absolutely. So 988, dial 988 on, on your phone and press 1. And you, and you don't have to uh, call just because you're suicidal. You If you're having a bad day, call them and talk to them. That's what Heck they're yeah. here for. Yeah, they don't care. So, and also, we, we guys... Have, it, Go ahead. We may Ron. be a grump. We may be a group of grumpy vets. However, we are very vet. Help me out, guys. Centered. We're, we're very pro vo uh, pro vet. Well, hell yeah, yeah, we're pro vet centric. Vet. Yeah, centric. Yeah, see, nine fifty three at night. Brian's throwing out them big words. My brain don't work after two in the afternoon. So, so but, but anyhow, yeah, no, also, we are if, any, if anybody is who's listening is a veteran, doesn't matter whether you're a guy or a girl, just, but if you're a veteran and you would like to be a part of a group, I, like I said, I, we have the veterans call. It comes up every Wednesday, eight mm -hmm. o'clock, uh, from eight o'clock to 10 o'clock is what, when we're normally talking and that's uh central time going to make sure we yep. do send, lay the central time out shoot an email over to either me or or rich and i will get you added into uh into the zoom uh zoom invite i'll drop a zoom invite over for you so that you can jump on and it's not a requirement that there's no no cost to it no nope. just jump on and and talk jump Introduce on, say yourself. hey how you doing how's your mom and them exactly and and we will that in we'll have a, a while. Hell yeah! And we'll and we're always glad to have have new folks there for a while. We were having about six or seven people who were all on uh, at once. But if right. we, you know, if we turn around and we start having, you know, a good 10, 12 people at a time, that's awesome. That's great. It's not that we're all going to be able to talk all at once, and that's okay. We're just not there to be able to talk all at once, but we can all commune with each other we can all have a good time of just living with each other having just a little speck of moment in our busy lives where we can sit around a bunch of other vets and just you know talk just to be us yeah you know be us that's it with with no judgment thank you well yes, we judge no you judgment. but it's but it's but it's a good judgment well, I mean, yes. I, I mean, vets judge other vets anyway. I mean, we've done oh, it from, yeah. from the time we joined in. But, yeah, yeah. But still, no. I mean, I mean, you know, if you want to dance in a pink tutu, hey, you do you, boo. <laughs> that's, <laughs> I mean, that's fine. You do you. I, I don't have a problem with it. Just know I'm not dancing in a pink tutu. No, no. He wears the red bikini, so. <laughs> And see, his isn't pink; it's purple, but it's not a two-two; it's a four-four. <laughs> oh, <my> so. <laughs> oh, so guys. Weird. Also, one other thing that we I'd like to add right before we uh, close this all up is one of the things that we you can do with a podcast two point is you can actually uh, compliant app is you can actually send us what's called boostergrams. And these are messages that get sent instantly. They arrive to our uh, uh, arrive to our wallet, and mm -hmm. from there we can actually read the message that you have and that you send. So if you want to ask ask us a question, you can you can do it via email. Send me or Rich an email, yep. or you can send a shoot over a, a boostgram. It, it doesn't have to be much. You can send this over. You know, five sats and 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 you can send one. Tell us whatever we don't care. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, if you if if you want to if you want to advertise uh, through the boostergram, that's fine. I am going to put at least a hundred sats that you send to us before you uh, before you do a a, uh, 
uh, but before you have us do an ad re- read, just because we are professionals of some sort. Yes, yeah, some, and- <laughs> some sort. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll, and, and so, so we do yeah, have a, we do that. have a cost. It, it's a hundred sets. Send us at least a hundred sets, and we'll 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 read your read your ad for you. And so, <laughs> but so we're. we're We've got, uh, there's so much uh, available there. And like I said, I think it's newpodcastapps.com. And I'm not 100%, but I do know uh, yeah, that if you go. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, honestly, though, I would go to, uh, where is I Podcastindex.org uh, and yeah. just hit there. Or, or actually, yeah, that's right, that's right. Podcasting2.org. That's that's another good one. You they have got a list that. of all the uh, yep. of all the apps, and, and they yes, can tell you and, whether it's for Apple or Android, or yep. and and they got it all the segmented web. out. It's great stuff. And yeah, and and yes, you can with the podcasting 2.0 app, you can get regular podcasts. So yeah, yeah, you're still yes, able to download is, all the yeah. others. It's just podcasting 2.0 has extra. Fancy stuff. And this is what's underneath the hood. How the sauce is made. There's things called namespaces. Yeah. And so we'll, we can do a live item tag, which is uh, our lit tag, and that tells us that tells the 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 podcast player, hey, this person is li- broadcasting live right now, and you can actually go on and you can either watch if they support video or listen if they're just audio, and be able to hear messages. what the and you can still send boostergrams yeah. now you can there's a you can uh jump back and forth on like i said we there's chapter support uh there's actually they're working trying to figure out how to set up what's called cross app uh comments yeah so yeah, no matter what platform that. what platform you're on you can comment on a on a show and somebody listening on say like podverse would be able to reply right and then someone oh over on over on uh, uh, Castomatic would be able to make a, a comment, and so it all just kind of uh, jumbles together. Yeah, hey, Brian. that's still in that's still in the works, but yeah. uh, so it's not quite available. But there's like thirty different uh, namespace tags that are available, and yeah, it's just there is quite a few. I just the, I was just I was just going to say, you know, maybe maybe we can. Uh, oh damn, where'd you go? Oh, there you are. You like vanish for a second. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I was Super. grabbing a pretzel. Oh, okay. But you know, I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, uh we break these people in a little slower, you know, because the uh, information that you're throwing out, I mean, my head's starting to go crazy right now. <laughs> it's like it's like I mean, I'm a, I'm learning and all this gonna, stuff. And we ain't all gonna right, talk so about that'll be another him. one. So so yeah. And dude is just, oh, we, we ain't gonna go there. <laughs> head, no, head past swimming point. Oh, hang on. Hang on, dude. We will hook you up with, with, with uh, what you need. But now we'll be, we'll be explaining more and more about podcasting 2.0 as we go along. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's actually a lot of fun. It's, it's exciting. It's new, but it's, there's a lot that, yeah, we haven't realized yet. Right. And but also, guys, uh, just as we're cl- wrapping up, a uh, couple a uh, couple other uh, small requests. If you want to provide your talent and tra- uh, talent and time with, uh, there's a few segments that I would like to go ahead and get some jingles for. If you want to make some jingles and send them my way. Uh, one is for the segment Brian's Tech Space. That's the one I just got finished writing down. Also, Brian's word of the day. And these are, um, when I say short, I mean real short, like maybe no more than like five seconds if we can, if we can get it that short. Uh, Another one is shit Brian knows, (laughs) shit Rich knows, and shit Ron knows. Also one for Ron's rink and uh, Rich's ham sandwich. And also on these, the only request that I will say is with music, make sure it is royalty free. Do not use any copyrighted music. So no. don't put any like Bach, Bachman Turner Overdrive or or uh, 
or or scorpions uh, or ACDC or scorpions or any of the or ACDC or anything like that in there because we won't be able to use it because uh, we will get an uh, uh, DMCA takedown and that's no good. That's no, no good. That is no bueno. So, so uh, a good place if you want to if you're wanting music, good place to go. And also is also a podcast. It's actually music 2.0 compliant. Is uh, Wave Lake is a great place to go and and uh, listen and to music. No, no, no. Wave Lake, you know, explain this if they haven't heard of it. Wave Lake, W A V. Yeah, Wave is in is an audio file. W A V, or, or as the British call it, Wab, Wab Lake. Oh, okay, so. yeah, L A K E. Because because <laughs> when I tried, I was using. Like wave, like you wave at somebody. Oh, <laughs> and it wasn't working. No, it's I a mean, sound. It's a sound wave. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. But uh, no, their uh, uh, SoundCloud's got got royalty free music. Uh, that one's a lot of times it's DJs using using uh, copyrighted music, and that's one of the big. That's well, the, that's kind of a of a hinky. So if you if you do and you've got permission to use the music from you know well like look, if someone's doing a doing a remix of of uh of say Halloween uh now nah, most yeah no no you see you see that thing most of that is uh locked up but you see if you look like I think it's at the CC4 uh uh cc4 tags i think are are royalty free you don't need permission you don't need to uh uh attribute even though we will attribute if we find out who who made the song because i mean we we want to recognize them just as you know yeah. just as and also as... whenever yeah especially if you do like wave lake uh send us the artist's name also of any music that you use in there because what we do is we put a split in our in our feed, so that anytime uh, anytime y'all boost to us, that artist is going to get a percentage of that boost also. Right. So we're all we're sharing out with everybody. Uh, the uh, so if and also if you end up doing a doing like um, spending time to do some of the jingles for uh, for the the weird segments that I've just kind of coughed up there give us your name also send us your uh your wallet address and so and that if you I, don't have one we'll, we'll try yeah, if you don't have one, one uh there's there's a lot of re there's several not a lot there's several resources though that you can turn to and uh be able to get a a lightning wallet set up because it's not a bitcoin wallet it's like we use the lightning uh uh, off chain network, which is a little bit different. It still uses Bitcoin, the Bitcoin value, but it, what it does is it takes it off off the chain, so that it can actually move faster. We don't have to wait for the thirty minutes for for the things to go through. When you send a, a boost, that boost and those satoshis arrive in our wallet and get divided up amongst us within like ninety seconds. It's no no time at all. It's just boom. It's done. Yeah. It's available. Hence the reason why they call so, it lightning. But yeah, so, we'll be right. we'll be we'll be saying more about this as we go on because I mean we want Absolutely. everybody to you know experience ed educating all of y'all's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, is, but, but yeah, so, all right. that. Uh, any any last words? Any y'all need to drop? Uh. I think I'm pretty good right now. How about you, dude? Well, dude is pretty good. All oh, right. Dude well, guys, is good. All right. Well, guys, y'all take care. Y'all have yourselves a great rest of the week. We will see y'all next Thursday at seven o'clock. And might even by then we might have even got uh, got the live uh, live tag figured out and uh, and start being able to go live too. So well, as soon as possible. we figure that get that one nailed down. Well, you'll you'll start uh, you'll start noticing it. So, That's all right, cool. guys, y'all take care. We'll catch y'all later. Take it easy. And again, if you need help, speak up. Speak up. Yeah. If you're, it's life is it's never a a permanent solution to a temporary problem. It's never the answer, man. We're here 
we're here for you. We're here for everyone. And uh, that's the one thing we're doing about this. All right. Is we want to show guys that y'all can actually have fun conversations on a very regular basis and, and, and have, have good times doing it and be able to live each other with each other in, in close, uh, in close terms like this. Yep. So guys, yep. so. y'all take care, have a great week and we'll see y'all next Thursday. Later. Till then. Bye. Talk to you later. Dude, signing off.